Hello everyone and welcome back to CHTV. My name is Griffin Hadley and today I am here with principal of Carmel High School, Dr. Harmis, to discuss all things Carmel heading in into the 2020-2021 school year. Dr. Harmis, how are you doing today? You know what, I'm doing great. The, uh, it's been a long summer uh, and we've been very, very busy trying to put uh, the schedules together, trying to figure out the classes we can offer. Uh, and really trying to figure out all the protocols to do our best to keep everybody as safe as we possibly can. Um, but it's really coming together, Griffin, and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy with that. Uh, you know, about a month ago, if you asked me these questions, I probably would have known about 40%. Uh, and today, I probably know about 98%. So, I feel much, much better where we are as an entire staff and as an entire school and corporation. So we're ready to go next week. For sure. That's awesome. And I'd like to ask who was involved in the decision-making process for Carmel High School and what ultimately led you to decide that the hybrid schedule was the way to go? You know, it started out with a committee uh, at the district level. Mm -hmm. And they were looking at all different aspects of, of what things might look like. And of course, my team, all the assistant principals and department chairs and, and um, teachers have been talking about, you know, what's it going to look like? How should we do this? What's the responsible way to do this? And to be honest with you, I, I kept on thinking about if we have 5,400 kids in the building, and we take a, somebody takes a picture of that A hall area oh, for where sure. Sure. it really comes into play with all those people in it as, as they come down from math and come down from, uh, from world language. That's not very good social distancing. Um, so it, we really came to the realization that we needed to do a hybrid schedule pretty quickly. Uh, to be able to, to do it right and, and to do as much as we possibly could for kids. Um, you know, we've got it down, Griffin, even to a point where uh, the even number rooms, a bell will ring, and those guys will start out in the hallway. Oh, wow. And then 30 seconds later, later the, um, the bell will ring again for the odd numbers to go out. Cool. And in that A hallway that, that we talked about, we all know love, if you go to Carmel High School, uh, half of the third floor and half of the second floor is gonna go out that back stairwell okay. uh, by the cafeteria, and the other half can go out the front. And, and that way we can keep things safe and, and keep things you know, the way it should be. So who all was involved? I'm not sure there wasn't anybody that wasn't involved. Uh, you know, we've been talking at the district level. Dr. B has done a fantastic job leading us through this process. Um, so we're very, very pleased where we are. So with that being said, what are your biggest concerns heading into this year? And how can we as students help you with those concerns? You know, you know as well as I do that social distancing is huge. You know as well as I do that keeping your hands washed is, is huge. We have, I think it's up to 63 different uh, hand sanitizing stations throughout the building. Uh, we've, we've been putting those in in the last couple of weeks. Uh, your mask, guys, you gotta wear your mask. I mean, that's just the way it's gotta be. You know, you might be in a classroom where you're only with 12 people and you can be six feet apart, then it's going to be that teacher's discretion. But most of the time, besides when you're eating lunch, we've got to make sure that that mask is on. The other thing is, too, the congregating, especially in, like, the commons, you know, everybody's got time to, to hang out for a little bit, and, and we love that. We just can't do that this year. Uh, we got to make sure that, that people are not in those big groups. We're asking them to get to class. Um, if we want to stay in school, we really have to work together to stay in school. And, and our student body is so good that I think they'll understand that. 
uh, and do as we ask. Now, as we get comfortable with it, with things, yeah. people will start going, well, yeah, maybe we can, but we just can't. Uh, so to help us out, again, social distance, wear your mask, make sure that you're using all those sanitizing stations that are around the building and uh, just do what's right. It's, it's really pretty simple because we want our kids in the building. Uh, we miss you guys terribly. And uh, we want to make sure that we can continue this all year long. For sure. And with that, can you briefly explain what the plan is uh, that is in place to address positive tests if um, coronavirus does strike? A couple classrooms. Yeah, as a matter of fact, it's on our FAQ, the district website. So I'm going to read it so I don't give any false information or give any vague information. Um, it says, for one positive student, it is recommended that contact tracing be done for that student only. And close contact students or staff should be quarantined for 14 days from the day of, date of the last exposure. An exception may occur when cohorting and so forth. But in your classrooms, you're going to have assigned seats. In your, for lunch, you're going to have assigned cafeterias. Um, and because of that, that contact tracing uh, will be much easier to do. And, and that's, again, one of those things that, you know, I wish I could go to wherever I wanted to go. Uh, but it's a new reality, and it's just something that we're going to ask our students to do and, and make sure that they understand why. Um, you know, the, the local health department being consulted for the guidelines re related to quarantine. And, you know, if we have an outbreak, then, you know, the, uh, the health department working with uh, ESC will make decisions on whether we're going to win or if ever we would close the building. But because we're doing that contact tracing, you know, if you're sitting in the front left corner of the room and I'm in the rear right corner of the room and you're the person with it, if I'm in the right rear corner of the room, I'm never near you. Yeah, for sure. So that, that idea of six within six feet for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about that. But those people that might be right around you, those would be the people that we would be concerned with. Awesome. And do you have any advice for students or even your first staff going into next week um, to really just aid in the process of going back to school and dealing with all of the new protocol that is going to be introduced uh, into the school day and the school year? Yeah, a couple things. Number one, if you can't answer the three questions about being around somebody with COVID, have you had a fever and those things, if you can't say no to all of those, don't come, stay home. Uh, what we don't want are, are people who are ill in the building. We wanna make sure everybody stays safe. The other thing is, and, and I know the start of school is exciting, but we really have to get people to listen uh, to what's going on. And, and what we're asking and the directions that are happening. Because what we can't have is, oh, I didn't know that. Uh, well, you've been told it about six times so far in the first two days. Uh, so please make sure that you really listen, understand, take it to heart. Uh, because again, we want kids in the building and we want people to be safe and we can't do that unless all 5,400 students really abide by that. How can students be prepared for the start of this year? And is there anything specific that they can do or that they need to be ready for this school year? Yeah, here's one thing I would suggest is before you even come into the building, read the student FAQ uh, that we sent out to everybody. Everybody has that. That's the way you, you have a jump start in knowing what you know. The other thing that I'm going to say is to our seniors, we really need you this year. We need you to lead. We need you to model. Uh, you know, if somebody's walking down the hall without a mask, don't just walk by them. Just say, hey, could you please, and do it in a nice way, could you please put on your mask for the safety of everybody around? Uh, 
So we're going to need your leadership. But the FAQ and knowing those things before you walk in the building will help tremendously. Awesome. So that can be found on the Carmel High School website? Can be found on the Carmel High School website, and we send it to an email to all families. Now, Dr. Harmus, one of the most talked about topics has to be lunches. What is going to occur this year for lunch periods and what is going to look different in regards to student seating? Well, lunches are going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're still going to have time to, to see your friends and so forth. But as I said earlier, one of the things is we're going to assign classrooms to different cafeterias. But once you're there, remember going through line and, and so forth, you're still gonna have to have your mask on. Once you sit down, uh, you're, gonna, you're going to be able to take your mask off and eat, talk and, and so forth. Once you put your tray up, we need that mask back on. But again, you know, there won't be as many kids to a table. Mm -hmm. uh, the tables will be spread out. Remember, we usually have, have about, 1,300 kids yeah. in a lunch period. Well, now we're gonna have 600 kids in a lunch period. So there's gonna be a lot more room. So we're gonna have you spread out. We're gonna have less people at the table, but we, we wanna make sure that kids get an opportunity yeah. to talk to their buddies. Now I will tell you this, some of your friends might be in Greyhound and some of them might be in Maine. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it's gotta be. Yeah. Uh, so please make sure that you stay there. The food options, I hate to say this, <clears throat> but they're not going to be as, as enormous as they usually are. Uh, those are gonna be pared down, and I don't know exactly uh, what that's going to look like, but I do know it's gonna be a pared down situation. But we wanna give you 30 minutes to relax, mm -hmm. 30 minutes to talk, 30 minutes to uh, you know, figure out what's going on tomorrow night and, and those type of things. So lunch is going to look a little bit different, but still you're going to have time to talk and, and meet with your friends. I think one thing to talk about is that in this school year, students are going to have to adjust to a new normal. And a lot of kids really think about getting that high school experience, socializing with friends, uh, building relationships with teachers, uh, joining clubs and sports and everything like that. What can kids expect to get out of this school year because it is going to be looking a lot different? You know, it is a new normal, but we don't want to suck the fun out of school. I mean, we really don't. Uh, because like you said, all those extra things are what's icing on the cake at Carmel High School. You know, all of our athletic teams in the fall are practicing now and so forth. Our band is out practicing now. So we're gonna keep those things as normal as possible. Clubs are still gonna go. Uh, you know, and it might be that if you're on a virtual day that day, you can come in after school and you can go to that club meeting. Or if you choose to, you can zoom into that club uh, or, you know, the teacher might have it on two days. So we'll have it on both uh, the Greyhound and the Carmel cohort days so kids can be involved. We still want that family atmosphere at Carmel High School. We still want, hopefully, to have some sort of homecoming. We still want, you know, as kids are passing through but not congregating, <clears throat> the uh, the drums playing in, in the commons. Uh, we want to get as normal as we can in the restricted environment we are. But Carmel High School is much more than just the academics, even though we're really, really good at that. And you guys are awesome. Uh, it's all about those special events. And as many of those as we can do safely and responsibly, we're gonna do that because that's part of the high school experience, and, and you guys deserve that. As an incoming senior this year, I know that this year is going to look a lot different for the incoming senior class of 2021. What is your message to the senior class to get as much as they can out of this school year? You know, one of the things that, that I've talked to some, some incoming seniors about is staying involved. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because if you watch the video of the seniors last year as they left, they talked about when they came into their senior year, they couldn't wait to get to college. 
but then they understood how important that senior year was. You know, you guys are at the top of the hill. You guys are leading the entire school. You guys are setting the tone. You guys are, you know what Carmel High School is about. You are, you are the elders of the family of Carmel High School. Yeah. And, and it's still got to be that way. You know, even if you're a virtual student, you are still Carmel High School. And for our seniors, I want you to understand that we appreciate you. We're going to celebrate you. And uh, we're looking so forward to having you lead us. Yeah. Uh, it's a great class. And what you guys will be able to do and the legacy you'll be able to leave at Carmel High School will be great, even through our new normal. Uh, probably more important now than ever before. Mm -hmm. So to our seniors, we love you, and uh, we can't wait for this year to start. For you, Dr. Harmis, what are you most, uh, most looking forward to once this pandemic is over and once things kind of start going back to normal? <laughs> Everybody in the building. You know, and it was funny, I was down at uh, freshman registration today. Mm -hmm. And just being around kids again is so much fun. Yeah. And, and that's what, you know, I hope that every educator gets in this business because they love kids and they love hanging around with kids and talking to kids and really leading kids uh, and learning from kids. Yeah. Um, so what am I looking most forward to? That I don't have to worry about all the things COVID Mm -hmm. And we can go back to our school, what we think is normal. It'll still be a little abnormal, but what we think is a normal school day and not have to uh, worry about masks, not have to worry about social distancing, uh, that'll be a great day. Yes, yes, it will be. And finally, my final question is, what can we do as students to get the most out of the beginning of this year? I think one of the things, and, and everybody needs to understand this, we're doing the whole curriculum. You know, when we left in March, we left in a hurry. We told our teachers to pare things down. <laughs> we told them to have grace and, and so forth with grades. This isn't that way this year. You know, we're doing the whole curriculum. We're going to expect students to check in on their virtual days. We're going to expect them to take, our teachers will be sending out and you need to be there for attendance purposes. Yeah. The state's gonna hold us to having those virtual days of at least six hours of education. So it's not going to be a five minute assignment on a virtual day anymore. It's gonna be a regular assignment. You know, if you're in English and you're working on a um, paper, it might be that you're writing that entire rough draft on that next day. And then when you're in class, you'll go through that. So you have to understand and you have to be ready. It can't be that you're gonna wake up at two o'clock in the afternoon, do your work at two o'clock in the morning. They've gotta be ready for the day. And here's one big reason why, Griffin, if we do get, a, get an immunization and we do come back to school, we want to make sure that everybody's ready, that everybody has done the work, and that everybody's on a time schedule instead of uh, that two o'clock wake up call and the 2 a.m. doing your homework. For sure. uh, also, I think what, what will help us is remember, we're going to do an 845 start. Mm -hmm. So we're going to 845 to 345. Uh, I was thinking about that because I usually get up at 515. So that idea of getting up to 6.15 will be beautiful. Uh, <laughs> and we might even have more light coming into the building, you know, in the fall and the spring. So that would be good too. Oh yeah, for sure. Now, Dr. Harmus, is there anything that you would like to add specifically to address the student body, this staff, the parents, anybody um, in the community just, to, just for a final send off? You know, I, I think I would. I, I think one of the things as we saw through the spring and, and here in the summer, you know, the racial strife that's, that's going on in our country. And we know uh, that our, our black students, many of them are hurting. Mm -hmm. and, and we see that and we hear that. 
we have to recognize that as a school, as a school community. We have to make sure when we talk about racial equity that it is for everybody. We, we just, it is so imperative that we treat people, all people, with respect and dignity and treat each other the right way. Mm -hmm. um, there's no room at Carmel High School for not treating people right. There's no room for racism. There's no room for bigotry. Um, we need to make sure, because we're better than that, we really are. We're, we're a great, great school. We have to act like it. And we're, we're going to expect kids to act like that when they're in the building. And we would sure like for kids to act like that on social media. Um, so know that, know that we're here for all kids. Mm -hmm. Know that, that we know that some of our kids are hurting. Uh, and we're going to be here, whether it be a counselor, whether it be teachers, whether it be administrators, whether it be their fellow students, uh, to help as we begin the new year. And that's the way it should be each and every day of every year at Carmel High School. Very powerful. Thank you, Dr. Harmus, for sitting down with me today. I'm sure a lot of people are excited for next week. And it's going to be an interesting year, but it's going to be a good one. Thanks again. This has been Griffin Hadley for CHTV. We'll see you next week.